Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, March the 3rd, and it's 2.31 p.m. Okay, before I took my nap, I had, um, I didn't sleep last night. I couldn't figure out. I thought, oh, maybe the Lord wants to give me a message, and... I kind of got one, but it was just personal and kind of sad. But anyway, it was for me. Um, so anyway, um, when I finally got where I could read, <laughs> I went to, um, I prayed over the word and I said, Lord, please give me a word for today that I can share with your people. And I opened it up and I said, Ecclesiastes? Really? <laughs> well, anyway, in the meanwhile, last night I had placed an order with Instacart. And I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with, with them. I had ordered a few things a couple days before but I didn't want to do like a month's worth uh, anyway until the third so it would come out today so anyway so I get the ding ding on the phone you know so I'm like oh great they're shopping already before I can even read this so I didn't get much read I just now finished two and then I read three and then four and I'm going I'm like this guy's like suicidal <laughs> I mean seriously it's a very depressing book I didn't want to read this and but I feel like I have to read this chapter okay just one <laughs> and there's a reason he wants y'all to hear this so I pray that whoever this is for watches this and doesn't shut it off till it's done or till you get the point <laughs> whatever the lord works in mysterious ways let me tell you something okay i would have preferred you know revelation something or well the end of revelation the middle is not so happy either <laughs> that's not a happy book either <laughs> if you miss the raptures oh boy even the first one you don't want to. You want to be ready. <laughs> so anyway, let me go ahead and get started. Okay. The futility... My... Okay, I'm in NASB on the Blue Letter Bible. And you know how the NASB breaks sections and they title it. The NASB has little titles for their sections. So this starts off the futility of pleasure and possessions. Okay, and this was written by King Solomon for any of you who didn't know. And he was probably one of the richest men ever in many ways. He had many concubines, <laughs> many wives. I had a preacher one time that said, I don't think we're going to see Solomon in heaven. But anyway, um, let's move on. I said to myself, come now, I will test you with pleasure. So enjoy yourself and behold, it too was futility. I said of laughter, it is madness. And of pleasure, what does it accomplish? I explored with my mind how to stimulate my body with wine while my mind was guiding me wisely and how to take hold of folly until I could see what good there is for the sons of men to do under heaven the few years of their lives. Now, anybody that doesn't know the Old Testament well yet, King Solomon um, was David's son, and he asked, the Lord asked him 
what gift shall I give you? Because he was pleased with Solomon. And King Solomon thought for a minute and he said, to have all the wisdom I can have, or ha however it's worded, he wanted wisdom. Not things, he wanted wisdom. So the Lord blessed him with all this wisdom. And because he didn't ask for worldly things, he gave him worldly things too in his kingdom. Okay. So that's a little background for you. He was a very wise man. Okay. he. Let me just give you a little story of what wisdom wisdom he used. There was two women. They both gave birth about the same time. Well, one lady's baby died and she said, I know what I'll do. I'll sneak into her room or her tent or whatever and give her my baby and I'll take her baby. And she did. And she got away with it. But they, I mean, nobody caught her doing it. So they wake up in the morning and there's this lady laying next to this baby that's dead. And she's like, ah, you know, how you would be. Well, anyway, she finds out this other lady has her baby. And she's like, that lady's got my baby and this baby here is dead and it's her baby. Well, anyway, they had this big old battle and they took it to Solomon. And he said, I'll tell you what. Just somebody with a sword come over here and cut this baby in half and give half to her and give half to her. Well, the real mother stepped up and said, No, 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 just give the baby to her. Just give the baby to her. Well, he knew. The other one was like, Yeah, that's, that's fair. Seriously? Are you kidding me? Anyway, he knew the real mother would have the true love for the baby. And he said, take that baby and give it to the real mother over here. That one clearly is not the real mother. You see, that was part of his wisdom. I like that story. Okay, now you know a little bit about Solomon. So now he's, he's depressed and he wrote this book. Okay, so, um, what good is, what he wanted to see what good there is for the sons of men to do under heaven the few years of their lives. I'm on verse 4. I enlarged my works. I built houses for myself. I planted vineyards for myself. I made gardens and parks for myself. And I planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I made ponds of water for myself from which to irrigate a forest of growing trees. I bought male and female slaves and I had homeborn slaves. Also, I possessed flocks and herds larger than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. Also, I collected for myself silver and gold and the treasure of kings and provinces. I provided for myself male and female singers and the pleasures of men, many concubines. Then I became great and increased more than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also stood by me. All that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart was pleased because of all my labor. And this was my reward for all my labor. Thus I considered all my activities which my hands had done and the labor which I had exerted and behold all was vanity and striving after wind and there was no profit under the sun. 
Wisdom excels folly. So I turn to consider wisdom, madness, and folly. For what will the man do who will come after the king except what has already been done? And I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet I know that one fate befalls them both. Then I said to myself, As is the fate of the fool, it will also befall me. Why then have I been extremely wise? So I said to myself, This too is vanity. For there is no lasting remembrance of the wise man as with the fool, inasmuch as in the coming days all will be forgotten. And how will the wise man and the fool alike die? Well, actually, it should be read, And how the wise man and the fool alike die. It's exclamation mark, not a question mark. So I hated life, for the work which had been done under the sun was grievous to me, because everything is futility and striving after wind. This section is titled, The Futility of Labor. I'm up to verse 18, chapter 2, 18. Thus I hated all the fruit of my labor, for which I had labored under the sun. For I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet he will have control over all the fruit of my labor, for which I have labored by acting wisely under the sun. This too is vanity. This dude is messed up. Therefore, I completely despaired of all the fruit of my labor, for which I had labored under the sun. When there is a man who has labored with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, then he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with him. This too is vanity and a great evil. He thinks that's a great evil? Boy, oh boy. For what does a man get in all his labor? and in his striving with which he labors under the sun. Because all his days his task is painful and grievous. Even at night his mind does not rest. This too is vanity. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and tell himself that his labor is good. This also I have seen that it is from the hand of God. Hmm. Let me read that one again. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and tell himself that his labor is good. This also I have seen, that it is from the hand of God. For who can eat and who can have enjoyment without him? Now he's talking. For to a person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy, while to the sinner he has given the task of gathering and collecting, so that he may give to one who is good in God's sight. This too is vanity and striving after wind.
boy, he was messed up. I, I thought, I might read further, but I kept reading and, and reading and moving forward, you know, to three to four, and I thought it went all the way to ten, and it might have went further. I didn't go all the way to the end. And I, I was like, I don't think I read this but one time. <laughs> And I'm not even a hundred percent sure I can it I can um what's the word explain it? I mean it's sort of self explanatory. It just sounded like King Solomon got you know what he said. I've built all these things up and made ponds and I've made all these orchards and a way to water them and whoever takes over for me is going to get it all and they didn't do any of this. I mean how talk about feeling sorry for yourself instead of enjoying what the Lord did for him. I mean he kind of gets it in there right at the end. Who wants to live like that? I say, you know, it's like, why he should be, and, and eventually it may say this, I don't remember, but it seems like it ended well. Because <laughs> I remember thinking, boy, this guy got so depressed. But anyway, what is the point of storing up treasures on earth and in the bank and whatever? buying up stocks and bonds and by the way what's going on with stock market I have no idea the last thing I read yesterday was I think coming up a little or saw in a video but anyway so I think the point is <laughs> I want to say the point is um, hoarding what you have for your own pleasure is in the long run not going to give you pleasure. Look at his attitude. He should have been sitting up there in his throne praising the Lord for all that he was able to accomplish. I mean, I mean cause surely he wasn't the only one enjoying it. There was at least all them wives and concubines. <laughs> and there had to be children involved. I don't know. I just, I didn't want to read this. but And I said, I've got to find something else to read. <laughs> I felt like the Lord would say, no, you read that one. So, okay, I did. <laughs> I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this. Somebody needs to hear it. Okay, I hope nobody is depressed over the futility of life. I mean, I will tell you, and I know you're not going to want to hear it. There's many of you that are hurting. You need money yourself I get that I'm not talking to you there are people that could help help people like Morella and Tessa and this might be for those of you who don't ever give to anybody because you're just sure something's gonna happen and you're gonna need that money for yourself and pretty soon I don't think our money is going to be worth anything. I've said that before. If we're even still here. And if you're raptured up tomorrow, do you need it? Could you spare a little? I'm, I got a whole $25 collected from Rella. And that may be why I'm supposed to read this. Hoarding it is folly and foolishness. Futile, futile, using his word. All he collected was futile. 
but you know I pray I pray for all of you that are suffering going without you just would like to be healed and I know you would and I wish my prayers were enough I do I wish my prayers were enough for Morella and Tessa and Rachel and Lena all the ones who count on others to pitch in now and then or they go without and I know there's some people in here that are you're homeless you're living with relatives because of your situations I know that I know and I pray for you all and we do have good reason to believe we might and I mean I hate to say it I'm well let's just say maybe history will repeat itself and Nissan won March 25th and 26th maybe the historical day of the first exodus maybe we'll get our exodus we can't count on it we can't hold our breath on it but that's still nearly a whole month away anyway um, I'll pray I pray for you all I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over myself and you your devices and your internet connections so that we can stay connected until we're out of here with that I'll say bye for now I'll talk to you later